Bikeman123 writes, do you organise your CDs alphabetically by artist, uh, Christian or surname, genre? Good question. This is something that I've wrestled with uh, over the years, and I'm pretty sure everybody else has wrestled with over the years. What's the best way to actually organise, categorise and catalogue your music so that you can find it again when you want to put it on? I've gone backwards and forwards over various systems over the years. I'm going to go through what I do now and also some of the things that I've done in the past that haven't worked and some of the things that I've done in the past and have worked and I think I'm probably going to go back to, so I'll leave that to the end. Uh, but let's get cracking. The first bit, um, CDs alphabetically by artist, Christian or surname. So I will go for surname for the artist. So for example, Martin Gay is going to be under G, uh, not M. Uh, Muddy Waters is going to be under W, not M. So that's the first one. So artists, surname, right? If it's somebody with a double barrel surname, then it's the first letter of the first part of their surname, right? Um, and, and there's some, some way you have to sort of um, know a little bit, like Stevie Ray Vaughan. Is he Stevie Ray Vaughan or is he Stevie Ray Vaughan? <laughs> In this case, he's Stevie Ray Vaughan, so he would go under, under V, right? So that's, that's the way that works. Um, with the bands, uh, they will go under the first letter of the first name. So, um, yeah, basically ACDC a a is, is going to be under A's and Black Sabbath is going to be B's and, and so forth. And if there's a the or an a before the band name starts, I ignore that and go for the first letter of the actual where the name starts. Um, so the Beatles, for example, I ignore the the and it goes for B. I suppose with the the, it's going to be under the, it's going to be under T. But the Beatles is going to go under B, the Smiths is, is, is going to go under S, right? So far, so good. But then you get sort of more complicated things. So what happens with um, Buddy Holly and the Crickets? Are we sticking him under H for Buddy Holly or C for Crickets? Um, or, or like Junior Walker and the All-Stars? Is he, is he W for, for Walker or is he A for All-Stars? Um, in my opinion, this is how I do it at any rate, uh, it's whoever gets first billing on the album, right? So if this had been the All-Stars featuring Junior Walker, Right, then I would have put it under A for All Stars, but it isn't. It's it, it's uh, it, it's Junior Walker and the All Stars, therefore it goes under W for Junior Walker. Same with Buddy Holly and the Crickets. If it was the Crickets and Buddy Holly, then I, it, it would go under C, uh, but it isn't. It's 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 the other way around. So it goes under H for Buddy Holly and the Crickets. So it's it's whoever gets top billing and is listed first on the uh, on the actual album is how I do that. Uh, so um, that that can cause um, some, some sort of issues if you've got, for example, some of the discography is listed Buddy Holly and the Crickets, another is the Crickets and Buddy Holiday. Buddy Holiday? <laughs> Buddy Holly. <laughs> so half Billy Holiday, half Buddy Holiday, I don't know. It's been a long day. Uh, but at any rate, um, th then, then you have to sort of make a decision where all of them are gonna go, I suppose. Because for me, I want all of my stuff in one place. So I don't, I don't want, I don't want uh, Buddy Holly and the Crickets in one part of the collection, and the Crickets and Buddy Holly in another part of the collection, because that way, madness lies. Um, so that's what I do. So if you've got somewhere about, just pick one and and stick to it. Um, I would say you, at least you'll find everything in in one space. Um, if there's a if there's a, a, a name by the way of a band where there's more than one name, like Ocean Colour Scene, it's going to go under the first letter of the first word. Uh, so in this case, it's going to be under the O's for Ocean Colour Scene. Uh, and so forth. Um, when you've got um, collaborations as well, so I, I, I use a similar um, a similar strategy to where it's like you know the band and, and, and the sort of titular um, person uh, uh, who's, who's in the band. And I, I, I would also say the same thing. So obviously, if you've got someone like Meatloaf, it goes under M. There's no, no real argument about that. But this one's uh, Meatloaf and Bonnie Tyler. So are we are we going to put this under M for Meatloaf, or are we going to put it under T for Bonnie Tyler? Uh, again, the way I do it is the way it's list, which the way round is listed. Um, so in this case, Meatloaf gets first billing, so it goes under M. If the album had been called Bonnie Tyler and Meatloaf, it would have gone under T for Bonnie Tyler. So that's that one. Um, another example, um, you know, uh, you've got uh, which can be complicated. So, so this one is, um, is 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 just it's got the Jarvis Cocker Band on the side of it, right? The Jarvis Cocker Band which is kind of the name of the band, right? Um, so, so in this case, it's not Jarvis Cocker. So this should, if it, was, if it was Jarvis Cocker, just being Jarvis Cocker, then it would be under, um, under C, 
right, for, for Cocker, but because it's the Jarvis Cocker band, it's the name of the band. So this goes under J, right? So that's another thing to, to, to sort of you know, pay attention to. If there's a name in it, is it the name of the band or is it, is it the artist's name? So for example, Jethro Tull is a band name, it's not the artist's name. There's nobody in the band called Jethro Tull, right? So it would go under J for Jethro and not T for Tull. And it's the same in this one. This is going to go under J for the Jarvis Cocker band. It's not going to go under um, C for Jarvis Cocker even though it is obviously Jarvis Cocker. Uh, so so that's, that's where, where that comes in. Um, and again, if you've got, um, you know, and so it's gonna, be, it's gonna be filed away separately to the pulp stuff, in the same way that, um, you know, Pink Floyd stuff is gonna be filed away separately. That Pink Floyd is gonna be under P, uh, David Gilmore is, is going to be un, under G, and Roger Waters is gonna be under W, and, and so forth. So if you've got sort of individual, uh, you know, members of a, of a band um, that have gone on to do solo things, and they aren't necessarily going to be in the same uh, in, in the same part of the collection as as the band, unless they all happen to have the same letter initial, right? <laughs> so, uh, so that's something that's something that, that I've sort of split up, and and that comes that brings me on to what I used to do, which was really interesting to do, but it was incredibly complicated and it didn't work. So what I used to do uh, was I had little sections together of stuff that kind of belonged. So I would have the Pink Floyd stuff and all the solo stuff next to each other. Um, I had um, like you know people like Damon Albarn, so you know you've got obviously all the Blur stuff, the Good, the Bad, Bad and the Queen. Um, you know, gorillas, all those sort of things, I'd put in, in one lump together because they sort of spun out of each other. I had a section for all of my uh, sort of Seattle grunge stuff, uh, but then spinning out of that, I had bands like the Foo Fighters and Queens of the Stone Age and all that sort of stuff, where it was like band members that had been in the grunge scene that had then gone on to do other bands that weren't grunge, but they were band members that were from that. So I put them next to each other in the shelf so you could see a sort of linear sort of connection between the two of them. I had all the Madchester stuff, for example. So like all my Inspire Carpets and New Order and you know, sort of that, that type of band together, right? But then, then I had like Oasis next to that because um, like, you know, they, they were a Manchester band that, um, that were the sort of next evolution from the Madchester scene. They grew up, you know, the, watching bands at the Hacienda and stuff. Noel was a roadie for Inspiral Carpets and so there was like a story there. So I had all these little mini stories and things like that. Um, but the problem with that is that, that sometimes you've got artists that have so many connections with so many different parts of the collection and they've collaborated on all sorts of stuff and they've done all sorts of different genres and it, you know, it becomes very complicated to, to actually pigeonhole them as to where they go. You know, if you've got an artist like Gary Moore, for example, who, you know, he's done sort of blues albums and rock albums and all this other stuff, where precisely do you put him? And, and it got very complicated. So I stopped doing that and put everything sort of together. As for genres, um, just pure genres, you know, do I have a, a blues section, a rock section, a hip hop section, a classical section? Kind of, sort of, but no, but not really, but I'm going to go back to it, I think, in, in ways, but, but a lot broader than, than it was. For the same reason that if you've got things that are sort of very narrowly in genres, and you've got an artist or a band that happens to have played on multiple, uh, in, in multiple genres, lots of different styles of music, then you're going to have some albums over there, some albums over there, some albums over there, and you've got one artist that's scattered then to the four winds. It's very hard to sort of keep track of where everything is. So, um, so having it too split up, I find this very difficult. But some stuff I have split out, and I think in, in broad categories, I probably would do some more. So for example, my hip hop collection is, is sat here for the moment. All of the hip hop stuff lives together in, in, in these shelves. Um, that sort of works all right uh, for the most part. And that's really a legacy thing because before I started to put all these in, put these plastic wallets in, I didn't have space to have all the hip hop with everything else alphabetized. So I had that on a second uh, shelf, which is off camera over there. Um, and uh, I wanted to get everything as much as possible anyway. There's still a bunch more scattered around, but, but trying to get more stuff onto these shelves. So it just made sense to just sort of put all that in, in one place uh, for the time being, chiefly because I haven't sort of got around to putting these in the little wallets there's nowhere else they'd really fit anyway, so at the moment they're living there. But then I was thinking, well, yeah, you know, it would be nice on building up my blues collection, for example. It's nice to be able to take a, a little snapshot, like a visual cue, and look on the shelves and go, okay, this is where my blues section is. 
um, you know, I, I want some more blue stuff. And so you go through and it's all in one place and you can easily thumb through and see what artists you've got, see what albums you've got in one place and, um, and, and then go and, you know, find more stuff. But that's broadly how I do it. Um, so, you know, the things that, that I'm going to be changing, possibly um, I would add, I, I want to, I've got classical music se se separately at the moment, uh, for example. So that's in another shelf over there. I want to get all that here. And again, it, it makes sense to have the classical stuff in what in one sort of section chiefly it comes down to i think what i'm in the mood to listen to and so you know with, with things like um you know sort of jazz classical um that sort of music i, I it's more of a it's more of a mood that i'm, I'm interested in perhaps later at, at night um i'm going to go for those particular albums and i want to sort of thumb through them all at once if i'm if i'm in the mood to sort of throw something on to listen to on the way to work or to, to chill out on i could be it's more it's more to do with what catches my my mood and that could be basically any of that so that doesn't really need categorizing uh but i think you know with the with the jazz i'll, I'll put a jazz section in there i'll put a classical section in there i think the hip-hop stuff kind of works all right at the moment i don't think i'll break anything down too much so for the most part it's alphabetized so yeah, uh, alphabetized by the uh, surname of the artist. It's alphabetized by the first name of the band, um, and that gets you know challenging sometimes um, when it's the the name of the band is the name of the artist. So that's where I am with it at the moment. Um, and please let me know in the comments below uh, how you organize your CDs and if you've got any tips as well, because this is, um, it's a full-time job almost kind of like sorting out things and when new stuff arrives, like categorizing it, cataloging it all the way and all that stuff. So yeah, it'd be interesting to hear how you guys do it. And, and please tell me if I've gone hideously wrong and I'm missing the glaringly obvious about how to organize this stuff because yeah, we're, I'm here to learn and happy to do so. So thanks very much for watching. Um, I'll see you all in the next one. And uh, yeah, cheers.